The U.S. election is a little under 90 days away, and there's still a big unknown at this point, that being who will appear with Joe Biden on the Democratic ticket. The presumptive Democratic nominee is expected to announce that decision this week. And to talk about this, we're reaching out right now to Cynthia Watson. She's a field director at Richland County Democratic Party in South Carolina. And she joins us right now in Columbia. Cynthia, nice to see you. Hey, Michael. Good talking with you again. Yeah, and you. And I should say, really, to be precise, 86 days, 11 hours and 45 minutes before the next uh, vote in the U.S. Uh, many people are counting <laughs> this online. We're counting down the days as well here, Michael. <laughs> okay, so here we are, as we said, 86 days and 11 hours beforehand. Uh, Joe Biden says already that his running mate is going to be a woman. There are calls for that pick to be an African-American woman. Uh, I'm wondering if you could share with us your thoughts. How significant would either be, uh, whether it's a woman or an African-American woman? Well, you know, that's been an interesting uh, question and uh, a lot of conversations surrounding uh, that decision that Joe Biden made himself. You know, it was he himself who came out and said that uh, his VP pick was going to be a woman and it was going to be a woman of color. Um, and so it's exciting. Um, you know, and while we're all in uh, anticipating who that person is going to be, um, we have a wealth of uh, wealth of qualified candidates uh, for him to choose from. Okay, now you know I'm going to press you on on your thoughts about uh, the shortlist. But before we get there, <laughs> you know, for and, and this is you know for a Canadian perspective, I think it's worthwhile to talk about African American women in particular as a voting bloc in the United States. How important is this cohort for Democrats who seek to win any political race in the United States? Well, you know, the African American vote is uh, it's a it's a huge part of our democracy, and it's a huge part of who. Um, essentially who wins the the presidential can, uh, candidacy one of the nice things and one of the things that i'm most proud of is the african-american female is the largest and the strongest voting block in our country strongest and also something that we've seen in, in the elections ever since donald trump has been elected in, in terms of the the midterm elections in terms of uh, certain candidates getting nominated uh, african-american women have really played a significant role haven't they um, exactly. And and the thing that's the most impressive, it's consistent and it continues to, to build. And I understand why Biden wants to pick a woman uh, and, and a woman of color. Uh, we certainly can see the benefits of him choosing, uh, of making that choice. OK, you say benefits. But so is there a danger of not picking an African-American woman for Joe Biden? Well, no, I don't believe there's a danger. And that's, you know, it's interesting, too, because I am... I look at his choice of wanting to select a female as, um, as something that's needed um, in higher political office. And so I look at that lens through the eyes of a woman first. And so I'm excited that he uh, is considering or would consider having a woman as his VP pick. But I look at that position, secondly, as an African-American woman. And I'm really proud that that is something that... Um, he is, he's considering. And I'll be honest with you, Michael, I'd be happy either way. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's take a look at some of the names being floated right now, in particular uh, African-American political leaders, uh, women, all of them. Uh, let's take a look at a board that we prepared for uh, people here at home, because among the people uh, that Joe Biden may be considering is, of course, Senator Kamala Harris, uh, former National Security Advisor, Ambassador Susan Rice, uh, the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Susan Bass, uh, Florida Congresswoman Val Demings. There's also the Atlanta Mayor, Keisha Lance Bottoms, and uh, Stacey Abrams of Georgia. Uh, what do you make of that field, and do any of those women stand out as a strong or the strongest VP choice for you? Michael, we're so blessed to have a wealth of uh, choices for, for, for Biden to pick from, and so um, we're really excited about that. Um, personally, all of the women are qualified to, uh, to be vice president of, of the country. Um, the person that kind of floats to the top of my list is Kamala Harris. Um, because she ticks all the boxes and she is a, a sharp uh, prosecutor with experience and she's also ran a campaign. Um, I think Susan Rice, however, might be better for vice president um, only because of her years as the national security advisor and she's also a close friend of Biden. 
Mm -hmm. And there's also the, the factor that if Biden were to win uh, in November, he would be the oldest uh, person to ever be elected to the office of the U.S. president. And of course, that raises the issue of who would step in if something happened to Biden. And really, the two women that you've talked about seem to have the most uh, on the ground experience. Well, and I, I would agree with you. And also, I think one of the things that Biden uh, also needs to is helpful and would be beneficial is that he also needs someone to compliment him on that ticket that's going to be able to reach out to um, our young, the young, younger millennials um, and Gen Zs. And I think that there is a there's just a divide just because of the age, but not because of policy. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we've seen it uh, all too often that uh, once a woman is named on any ballot, uh, the misogyny uh, comes out. And if it's a woman of color, the potential for racist comments comes out. So is there a risk for Democrats of alienating potential voters by actually naming a woman, uh, by naming an African-American woman? I don't know that I would say that it's a risk. Um, if it is a risk, it's a, it would be, it's a good risk. Um, there's always that certain block of, of voters, uh, typically the uh, white American age 35 to 54, who's just, who's just not going to vote for a female. It, it's not going to matter whether she is a person of color. They're just not going to vote for um, a female. And it's, and, and it's very interesting that we still have that underlying issue that affects our the that affects our democracy and, and the way that we vote, um, and, but it's an ugly truth. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, an interesting uh, choice in a few days ahead as we watch to see who actually Joe Biden chooses. Uh, listen, Cynthia, uh, the process has just begun, so you and I will speak again. But for now, thank you for that. You always well. Thanks for having me, Michael. I appreciate that. We'll talk soon. Yeah, we'll talk soon. You take care. That is Cynthia Watson, field director at the Richland County Democratic Party, who is in Columbia, South Carolina.